Hello and welcome along people to another one of my little videos. Have you ever wondered what goes into the manufacturing of a good motorcycle jacket? And a pair of jeans? Well today I'm off on a mission to hide out leathers to find out more about what goes into making motorcycle clothing. Welcome to Hideout Letters. Uh, we are here with, sorry, I'm here with Kate, and hopefully Kate is going to introduce herself and tell us all about Hideout Letters. Hi Matt, I'm Kate Jennings from Hideout Leather. So Hideout has been going since the 70s, it's been around many decades now. Originally uh, it was a leather manufacturer, hence the Hideout Leathers, and they made sort of bespoke items for the likes of Steve Parrish and Kenny Irons back in the day. Wow. So that's kind of how they broke into the motorcycle trade. I'd just like to say, you waited until the camera was on to name drop. <laughs> of like course, that. sir. <laughs> of course, sir. So I joined in the 90s, early 90s. Right. I'd done a fashion degree. So yeah. I'm, I was really interested in leather and working with leather. Knew nothing about motorcycles at all. Went to work for Hideout for the summer. Uh, it was supposed to be a summer job. Now, 25 years later, here right. I am, still so, here. <laughs> so am I right in thinking you are now the boss? I'm now the boss. You're the boss. I'm the boss. She's the boss. So the guy originally owned it, retired. Right. Um, and luckily for him and the company, um, he didn't sort of taught me everything that he knew and yep. then mixed with my abilities to do the pattern cutting and move the company into another direction. Right. You know, the skills carried on, whereas a lot of the guys that originally were making motorcycle leathers sadly passed away or retired, and those skills were not really given to anyone and else. Lost, lost with so, them. So, yeah, so they all sort of closed up, really, which is really sad. Yeah. But, yes, so here I am now. All those years later. All those years doing later. Doing a fantastic job in a fantastic setting as I well. Know. It's a beautiful location. I know. We were very, very lucky. Yes, my commute is about six and a half minutes in the morning, which can't be walking, bad. Walking or cycling? No, well, that's, uh, that's actually in a car, okay. but you know, the most annoying thing I might get is your tractor on my way in the morning, but apart from that. I had a few of those on the way over. <laughs> you saw them too. Now, I asked you this the other day, and I got a very um, humorous response response to it so we'll, see, we'll run it past you again. <laughs> Why an armadillo? Oh, so crunchy on the outside, chewy on the inside. That's right. Now give us the correct answer. <laughs> give us the boring but the, uh, the correct answer. Well I, I think it was many moons ago now but I was looking I was watching some sort of David Attenborough program and I saw this armadillo and I was like that is exactly what we do. So as soon as danger is around, he crawls up into a little ball. He's got this whole suit of armour around him, protecting all the squishy, gooey bits inside. So it was like, Armadilla. perfect. Armadillo. Brilliant. Right, now this, uh, uh, some of the guys um, I've sent out text messages to, I may mention their names, I might, I might even forget, who knows. But anyway, I'm going to start with me because I'm here. I'm six foot five. And, uh, and every time I go to buy a new set of anything, I struggle, mm. uh, having uh, a 36 inside leg. Can you help me? Yes. So I'm a tailor by trade. Right. So it's my job to make something for you. So I would measure you and make something completely from scratch. Yeah. If you're completely outsized or out of the what is deemed normal size. A bit like Bruno. <laughs> So, yeah, if you come to, to me, then you could have, I could make you anything, so leather or textile. You mentioned the other day, and it would leave it completely up to you, but you have a gentleman who's quite tall. So Bruno, my mate Bruno, and sorry Bruno, I'm going to keep on mentioning your name, because Bruno is six foot nine, but your gentleman is actually taller than Bruno. Six foot ten. Six foot ten. Six foot ten. Wow. And my, so my record is seven foot four. Wow. Seven foot four, yes. So, yeah. 
And as you say, the difficulty with being tall is often with the manufacturers is that they just make the suits bigger. Yeah. So we get so if you're if you're tall and slim, you've pretty much had it. Yeah. Because you've got to buy something and you can sort of wrap it twice around you. Yeah. Or you've got like a set of clown pants on because to get the length every time, you've got to keep going up the sides. Absolutely. And obviously from a safety point of view, there's no point in having something, you know, you have the suit of armour, but if the armour's actually sort of going to swivel around inside it, you're going to find that it's, it's not safe at all. Yeah, so they're not going to be protecting the parts no. they should be protecting. No, no, absolutely not. Um, right, back to Bruno again. <laughs> I'll stop mentioning Bruno after a while. Bruno mentioned in his text messages, he said some jackets are clearly 200 quid. So the jacket A is 200 pounds and uh, you can buy it off the peg. And jacket B is £1,500. Why? So, from the manufacturing point of view, you can get a basic Cordura, which is the fabric that the majority of textiles are actually made from. Uh, and some are two, three pounds a square metre. Yeah. Um, but as soon as you start getting into a technical fabric which has any abrasion resistant qualities right. or any real waterproofing qualities so as soon as you get into something technical so for instance the fabric that we use which is a sea change fabric which has and and then we use layers of kevlar as well inside that looking more like 50 pound a meter right so if there's two meters of fabric in your jacket right. at least you know, that will tell you where it, how much money is left in the jacket, or why that that jacket is two hundred right. pounds, yeah, or one thousand pounds, yeah. And the difference is between something that literally, if you slide down the road, you will be through in seconds. Now, remember, you mentioned this the other day about seconds, and I've quoted probably the wrong amount of seconds. But your fabric is good for how many seconds? So we do so we do a waterproof so our high pro range so that's been tested and that comes out at 46 seconds right and I actually do a fabric and kevlar combination which is stuff that we make for our police and that's 119 119 seconds, seconds. <laughs> snap you are sliding a long way that's it so the idea is that you would never go through it no. so it is it's, you'll definitely never get your skin on that tarmac. No. And the thing that you, I always think you've got to remember is usually when you are on your ass sliding down the road, at that point, you would really wish you hadn't spent 200 quid on your jacket. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> and you would not care yeah. how can I, much. Can I, can I, can I, it's too late. <laughs> it is too late, exactly. Now, you did explain this the other day. What's the difference between a laminated a laminated jacket, I need to put my false teeth in, <laughs> laminated jacket and a non-laminated jacket? So you get a drop liner. So basically you've got a fabric that is waterproof. So in, so a dropped liner jacket, so one that's not laminated, you've got the outer fabric and then you've got a, a layer of waterproofing. Yeah. So in some jackets that can be removed uh, and in some jackets that just stays in there. But what essentially happens is the outer will take on the water and get heavy, but you possibly wouldn't get wet because it yeah. wouldn't be enough to go through that underlayer. They tend to be warmer because you've got a layer of air right. between the outer and the inner. And actually, okay. air is still the best insulation that you can get. Right. Um, whereas with a laminate, what you've got is you've got an outer fabric which is um, then you've got your waterproof membrane, which is actually stuck to that outer fabric. So there's no gap. Yeah. And what this means is that any water that then sits on the outside is just beads off. Right. So they tend to be not as warm because they lose that insulative layer, but you would be drier because you can just shake the jacket off right. rather than wring it out at the end, right. of, a, so Darren, end of a trip. Darren Chadwick asked about uh, how abrasion resistant, I think we've covered that, and uh, th is it better up to layer up underneath a jacket? I, th I think what you're saying is 
have the laminated jacket and then layer up with something like this. Yes, and you'd need to then put something thermal or something with some thermal properties underneath that. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, yeah, you've got, it, it's not warm on its own. No. It can't be. And it's like you explained the other day where you're looking for the Holy Grail, that's what we mentioned. The Holy Grail, the Holy Grail, the Holy Grail of Viking. I would say we're always either too hot or too cold. Yeah. You know, getting that absolutely right yeah. is really difficult. And that's kind of why, you know, we're talking about waterproof textiles, trying to get one piece of garment that is going to do all everything properly is nigh on impossible. Yeah. You know, because if the more waterproof something is, the less breathable it's going to be. Right. So the, you know, the most waterproof thing that you can put on to, top of everything is a plastic waterproof sheet. Yeah. It will never go through there. But sometimes you wet it on the inside because there's you you just not breathe. There's no breathability right. to that at all. So if you then need to be cooler, any any membrane so anything that is then waterproof is not going to allow all the air to go through right because it can't be both 100 percent breathable and 100 percent waterproof right. there is no, no product maybe eventually we will find a product that can do that yeah. hopefully technology is coming on all the time they're amazing some of these actual products that they're making but so far there is nothing so that's kind of why we then created the, our concept system which relies really on a layering system so you've got your basic your basis of the jacket which has got all your so it's the outer shell so this is so this is really yes yeah, so you'd wear it as an outer yeah but it's, it's not waterproof but it's got all your abrasion resistance so that's the one that's 119 seconds right and then you've got your armor and that's in that and that's a breathable base yeah and then you layer it up Right. So then you put in your thermal, so you wear, as you say, something like that. Yeah. It's nice, that puts some heat back into you. Yeah. Or even heated clothing. Right. Because then you've got the best of, well, you, everything. Yeah. Up and down, and often they're warm on their own anyway. Yeah. And then a waterproof shell over the top. Right. And then, if, you know, that's the holy grail, isn't it? To yeah. have one, you know, one set of clothing that you can doesn't matter what's going on but you just keep peeling it down to yeah. being perfect for each bit yeah. but as soon as you get into a laminated textile water or water they call it water water resistant laminated textile it's a compromise right because you're never going to allow enough airflow through it yeah. to be cool on a day that's 40 degrees like we had last yeah. week no yeah that's it when you're hot, really, then, if you were wearing a t-shirt and shorts, not that you'd ever want to be wearing a no. t-shirt and shorts, but you would be hot in that. So yeah. nothing's going to cool you down. No. So then it's just getting keeping the weight off and trying to make it as breathable as possible. Yeah. And that, as you say, is the ultimate. Um. I have turned the camera off and I can't turn the camera back on again uh, because I was firing questions relentlessly at Kate and I thought we needed a little break. And while we had the camera switched off, Kate name dropped again. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Cruise. So Tom Cruise, yes. Yeah, so, Tell us more. Yeah, so we were commissioned to make or the motorcycle kit for the Mission Impossible 5 film. Wow. So I didn't get to work for Tom Cruise right. himself. Because in good Tom Cruise style, he gets out of a car in a shirt and a pair of jeans and just gets on a bike, rides at 150 miles an hour, tumbles and falls off, and of course gets up again with just a slightly sort of scattered, Hollywood, I think we call that. Very Hollywood. Very Hollywood. But um, for Rebecca Ferguson and her crew, so I did the leading lady. Right. Uh, we have to make her leathers. And I got to work with a lot of the road racers that I've already done suits for in the past. You can that, name drop again. That, 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 no, but I don't know if I'm allowed. It might be top secret. Who who is the stunt people for this? But oh, right. so they were actually coming off in our suits. 
So the stunts wow. are all real because Tom Cruise is a, you know, he's a Puritan. He likes to make sure that if, you know, that it's as real as it can possibly get. Apart from obviously him tumbling along the floor in a shirt, -shirt. which yeah. yeah would never happen. But uh, one of the guys who's their main stunt guy, he broke his scaphoid because he actually properly came off. Wow. So that's why they came to us because obviously they're actually hitting the deck so it's not Hollywood in in that, that respect, to yeah. that respect so they wanted to make sure that obviously the stuff that they were supplying was proper so it still had all the armor and yeah I had to do her a standing up suit though and a sitting down no suit. way so there was so not was cut. so there was not one little bit of millimeter of, of leather well now that brings us on to a point you mm. raised earlier Paul the camera was off um you do obviously because you're a lady um, you you um, can cover the curves of a lady better than maybe boys' gear or or boys would measure. Yes, yeah. for I a mean, lady. I think you know, women in motorbiking's come on so far, but we're still forgotten about to a yeah. large extent when it comes to the kit. You're on the back, you find. Yes. That's Just it. And so it. often, I mean, you know, I see less of it now. I think we're more educated, but I'd see the guy on the front with his full kit of leathers on and the girlfriend on the back with her flip flops and her shorts on. And you'd just be like, oh, no. Yeah. Um, but the choice of ladies clothing is getting better. But to get something that fits all the curves of us. All shapes and sizes. All shapes and sizes yeah. is is really difficult. Not every and I see so many. I have so many people come in to see me, and I make them something. And you know, I've had quite a few tears because they've been around every single motorbike shop. They they sort of said, "Oh, you know, there's a few bits in the corner for you," and no one really is interested because they can't fit them. No. You know, or they're wearing men's kit. And it's so uncomfortable Doesn't flatter. and it's really not very flattering. No. So to have something bespokely made to fit, you know, is, is a dream. Yeah. And it makes motorbiking so much more comfortable and safe, you know. Oh, absolutely. Because you said about uh, if the fabric folds, uh, if you're in an accident. Yeah. Um, obviously, if, a, if someone, whether either male or female, is, is wearing a, a fabric and it folds, yeah. what's, what's the risk? So basically, you'll go through the abrasion resistance is much much less right. because you're actually creating more of a, a friction on the road. Right. So and then your armour moves and yeah, it's not not good at all. Right, I've got uh, hints and tips for care once you've bought your suit. So you bought your suit. So textile stuff needs to be washed. Most of these are technical gar technical <laughs> fabrics and um, and if you, you you look at your car after a couple of weeks of being on the road the bike. then you look at your bike the the muck and grime that is all around that yeah. is actually all around you it's in your suit as well it's in your suit so it blocks the pores so if you have got a te especially if you know you spent a lot of money and you've got a technical piece of equipment that yeah. is supposed to be breathing you know all that muck and rubbish will stop it actually breathing right. and it actually stops it being waterproof so it, it spreads the fabrics so, is that is that right so, so it coats the fabric right so then it doesn't breathe anymore right so then the membranes can get a bit confused because it is it hotter on the outside or is it hotter on the inside all right yeah so the, the fabric we use which is sea change works on a like a fur coat Okay. So the idea of it is that when the temperature is warmer on the outside than on the inside, it opens up oh, right. and breathes. Yeah. And then vice versa, it shuts down. So it's highly technical. Right, yeah. So of course, if you cover that, then the fabric can't breathe. No. So then it thinks, well, am I hotter, am I colder? And then it will leak. Yeah. So yeah, you need to wash it. And I have had in the past, you know, good natured other halves who've thought it was really nice to wash their partner's clothing in normal washing powder. Now that will completely and utterly ruin any technical fabric. Oh, all right. It will never be waterproof again if you put it in a proper detergent. 
Right. So you have to use this. Lots of specialist ones. Like the tech Grangers, or... Nick Wax. Right. My personal favourite is Rangers. Right. Their products. We service a lot of kits, so I've pretty much tried them all. I will try to remember to get some information about the products, and I'll put them in the link in the description below. Mm -hmm. That's it. Um, Can I just say the most important we... part of the wash. Right. So the fabrics, when they're made, come with a DWR, which is an exterior coating. Okay. So it's like a silicon coat, which is, that's the bit that keeps the water beading off. Right. And any waterproofing is only effective if you can keep the water moving. As soon as it starts to settle or pool, yeah. it will come through the actual fabric yeah. and the membrane. So you need an external spray, so there's lots of them on the market, but you then spray the product. So not only do you wash it, yeah. but most of them will have uh, like a spray on, like Fabsil, and that's like a silicon coating that goes over the outside to keep yeah. the water beading off. A lot of people forget about that part. And that's the foam. <laughs> And so that brings us to the end of another video. Hopefully you've enjoyed this one. I know I've enjoyed making it. I've learned so much about making and what goes into making uh, leather products and textile products. Um, I now kind of understand more as to why jackets cost so much. As Kate explained in the video, um, there's an awful lot more to the pricing of a jacket than the general public can understand really. Would I buy something from Hideout Leathers? I've, I've bought something. Um, I've put an order in so keep tuned for that one and you get to see what I've bought uh, and the whole manufacturing process of what I've bought. Um, it's local which I think is fantastic. Uh, they're based in Essex. Um, I mean I was talking to someone the other day and said where else can you go and be on first name terms with a person who's going to make your suit? Okay, if you're buying a suit to go to a wedding, but you're not. You're buying a suit to ride a motorbike, which is even more important in my mind, uh, because there's a safety aspect involved. Um, they're so full of passion and knowledge. There's a heritage going back to the 1970s. Uh, Kate was so welcoming uh, about the whole video project, uh, so, you know, thanks ever so much for that. Um, she even came in on her day off um, today uh, to help me finish off um, doing the video. So, um, so, yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed it. I have. Until next time, people, take care of yourself. Bye-bye.